Hello! Welcome to Tuesday Tidbits! <laughs> it doesn't roll off like Monday no, with the Maven. It doesn't quite. <sighs> Hi guys! Hi. We've got a little, quite a few things going on around us today, and we're both sleep deprived today. <laughs> so this is what you're getting. Yeah. We, had, we exerted ourselves big time yesterday. That's why we weren't here with you. And today, neither one of us got a great night's sleep. And so we're just kind of rummy, maybe? Yeah, I don't know. It's like a little. A little silly. Yeah, but we're really excited to be here with yeah. you guys. And we've had a handful of spillover questions. We were going to do a deep dive today, um, <laughs> and we might still. <laughs> but Neither <we> <laughs> one of us can go very deep on anything today. So We didn't think it would be fair to try um, for you guys. But we did have some rollover questions and then a handful of things we just wanted to touch on. Um, so if you're joining in and you have questions, please, please ask. Um, or if you have something to add to the conversation, just let us know. And yeah. Did you put sunglasses in your hair? Yep. Oh. <laughs> Cause you didn't have those earlier. I did, but I was coming outside it's and then bright. I got to thinking like, I'm not going to put sunglasses on during a live, but it is really bright is right bright. now. So Sorry. I apologize if we're squinting. Yeah, totally squinting, but that's all right. Okay. All right, so let's, let's, do, let's it. do it. Um, what? Oh, there's a the dog behind me. <laughs> We're going to start by talking a little bit about disease prevention and or, dare I say, reversal. So I guess I'll start, dare, the, you say. dare I say, <laughs> say it. Um, I guess I'll just start by saying that we recognize and we don't want to be offensive to anybody, but we recognize that even some people who do all the things still are handed a crappy card yeah. and like that sucks. Um, and that said, there are things that we can all do to improve our chances of avoiding disease and or if we're already in the early stages or even down the road a ways that we can start doing to help at least stop the progression um, of most diseases and or sometimes we even see reversal. And Real quick. I just gotta, yeah. I don't mean to, I, I just, I'm a little distracted because my friend Bethany just hopped on and she's on vacation in Mexico right now, you guys. So. And watching. Yes. So, We're hey, girl. <laughs> in fact, we have all sorts of friends on here. Thank yeah. you guys so much for joining in. Hi, y'all. Sorry, I didn't mean I was <laughs> no. just. See, that's where I'm at today. I'm like, oh, friends. <laughs> We're both kind of in like, let's just have fun today. Yeah. But we really need to work, too. And yeah. so we're going to have fun with you guys. Yeah. And this is a, <laughs> and it's an important discussion, I think, yeah. that um, that tends to get glossed over when I think it's really important for us to chat about some of these things. And we have a lot of clients that um, we're so honored to be trusted with um, that are going through some really hard things, you guys, that um, have either are on the other side of let's just say we have a lot of um, a lot of clients in fact we highlighted one last week that are on the other side of cancer treatment that are just really wanting to be their healthiest self we have some active um, client uh, active cancer clients that we're really working with on the nutritional side while they work with their oncologist um, on other options um, we have you know Quite a few pre-diabetics, some diabetics, mm -hmm. a lot of uh, autoimmune clients. Um, we're not necessarily advertising, like, <laughs> like, hey, you know, if you're it, sick, come it, to it, us. yeah, it does take. It's it's a little bit of a different. I mean, every client, regardless of the scenario, is a unique approach. It really is. Like, there's no one box fits all by any means. However, with our clients that are coming to us that are in some form of a early or late stage disease, one of the most important things outside of just overall education for nutrition is going to be the role of inflammation in the body. Yeah. It just is. And that is true for anything where you, where you are trying to pre prevent the further mutation um, of cells. And so let's just talk about inflammation for a minute. Yeah, and you guys, we you are no strangers to hear, listening to us talk about inflammation. We talk about it all the time. <laughs> if you don't know, Emmy is deeply, deeply in love with bubbly. And ice cold bubbly, to be exact. Ice cold. And so when she takes that drink and she gives you like the true like, <sighs> like she means it from the depths of her soul. Anyway, loop, loop back around to inflammation. Yeah. So we've talked about it so many times before. I think that we have a whole, maybe we even have a whole live on it. We do. Um, 
but it is one of the things that like we talk about like inflammation generally speaking inflammation is not a bad thing we want our bodies to respond acute inflammation with acute inflammation so like if your kid gets a fever like the fever is good like we tend to think like oh no fevers are really bad but fevers are good like heating our body up in order to kill off invading viruses or whatever it is that's all really good we want that to happen same if you get injured and there's swelling and inflammation around your injury point that's good we want that what we don't want is long-term chronic inflammation and here in our western culture most people um, I think it's probably fair to say most people deal with long-term chronic inflammation just simply because of the foods that we eat. Um, and so I think that that is something that we kind of need to attack as a society. And, you know, we are the first ones to, to chat with our clients about ways to reduce inflammation in your body by changing the foods that you eat. And because like, I mean, let's be real, long-term inflammation causes all kinds of damage to our bodies. Like not just to our organs and different body systems, but to our brains, to our cognition. I mean, it is like, it's detrimental to everything and so if we can reduce or eliminate some forms of inflammation then we will be much healthier people in the long run we will and you know it's so interesting um, years ago like I, I've worked in the healthcare field for 20 years now and years ago I was on my own like personal quest to try to figure out how to be healthier how to minimize my risk I have a, a awful family history of cancer I'm a BRCA gene mutation client patient um, all the things and I was on this quest I was sick and I was on this quest for like how can I feel my best and prevent getting sicker but how can I feel better and you know it doesn't have to be too complicated like it really doesn't and I know that it's easy to say well just change what you're eating and that's not really easy for a lot of people um, but we can break it down and make it simple because nutrition is the foundation of your health. It is what, is, it's what you're putting in your body. Yeah. And, and we'll go a little bit further because it's all the things we're putting in and around our body that, that really um, translate to our health, right? So um, we're going to talk about this a little bit more and we have other things we want to talk about too, but it's the food we eat. It's what we're reading, what we're seeing, the conversations we're having. Are we getting sunlight? Are we hydrating our body? Are we getting adequate sleep? It's all of those things that ultimately allow us to be the healthiest version of ourselves. And food is 80 plus percent of the puzzle when you're looking at like the food and exercise component, right? You cannot exercise your way out of a bad fork. And when you're looking at true inflammation in the body there are other factors to inflammation like stress and like sleep and to some point um well we're, we'll stick with stress and sleep for now but nutrition is the number one thing and so that doesn't mean you have to deprive yourself yeah like we want our clients to eat foods that they enjoy so that they don't mm -hmm. feel deprived and so that they can and also not only eat foods that they enjoy but eat at a pretty high volume so that they can have sustainability once they've reached their goals and they're not feeling like they're on any type of a roller coaster, they're learning how to fuel their bodies, fuel their brains. Not everybody chooses to do that from, an from a non-inflammatory standpoint, but since we're talking about disease today, if you can start looking at understanding the role of chronic inflammation, especially if you have any kind of uh, hormone hurricane, any type of concern about being pre-diabetic, any type of autoimmune, any type of thyroid disorder, all of the things like inflammation plays a huge role in that. And so understanding what foods create inflammation in the body and what foods you can fuel your body and get the appropriate macro and micronutrients from that can help you feel your best while still enjoying them. It's mm -hmm. so powerful. And I have seen time and time again, I mean, I have seen uh, diabetics go into remission. Mm -hmm. I mean, fibromyalgia, candida, um, Park. Well, Parkinson's. We've seen huge improvement with nutrition. I wouldn't necessarily say full reversal. Um, IBS, tons of autoimmune hormones. Like it's so powerful when you start fueling your body appropriately. The change that can be made, and if you're healing from something, is all the more important to keep chronic inflammation at bay so that your body can operate how it was intended to and so that you can heal. Yeah. 
Sorry. <laughs> it's so, so bright. bright. I'm really distracted. Do you want me to put the umbrella up? Yeah, sure. And I'll okay. say a few things. Sounds good. Um, thanks, bud. Sure. Um, so, yeah, along that same line, you know, I think that it's really smart for us to talk about things that we can do immediately. Like you don't have to go to the doctor, you're going to eat anyway. So like if you're concerned about inflammation in your body, you know, choosing foods that are going to help reduce inflammation or not cause inflammation are always a good idea. Um, sorry, I'm trying to talk, but she's so cute over there, cranking up the umbrella. Um, she's coming around, here she comes. <laughs> Yeah, that's good. So, yeah. Yeah, okay, thanks. <laughs> anyway, um, you know, we have control over the things that we eat, and that is our first line of defense. <laughs> She's back, guys. Um, and so if you can just think about the things that you're eating and, you know, make little changes here or there, it's cheaper than going to the doctor. It's cheaper than a prescription. You're going to eat anyway. And so, like, if these things are concerning to you, then step one is to do whatever you can in the short amount of time, you know, or just in the meantime that you can do right now that doesn't take any effort. And so, um, you know, in that way, this is Betsy coming up. <laughs> <laughs> It's a real fun and, show yeah. here today, guys. Yeah. So anyway, why why wouldn't you want to do some of those things? So like generally speaking, when we talk about um, eating an inflammatory in an inflammatory way, you know, it's eliminating or reducing grains, sugar, dairy, and alcohol. Those four things, you know. And we're not saying like throw those things out and don't and seed oils and seed oils and throw those things out and don't eat any of them ever. That's not what we're saying. You know, we want it to be sustainable. Mm -hmm. If we um, if we see like a, a common pattern with a client, and we may say, hey, have you thought about, you know, reducing your dairy intake or um, grains, you know? And let's see, if, let's see if we can get rid of some of the inflammation that you may be holding on to, or if you're at a plateau and we gotta push beyond it or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's not like, we don't want you to throw the baby out with the bathwater. We want it to be, something sustainable and you know some people I feel like every body responds differently like I'm fine with dairy my body I, I don't get inflamed with dairy yes there is some inflammation just generally speaking because dairy is inflammatory by nature however my body doesn't respond to it in like a crazy inflammation state whereas like uh, my sister-in-law is very much allergic to dairy and her body like completely reacts to dairy and so you know everybody is different and everybody reacts differently to the different things that we put in it and I think that um, that's one of the great things about what we do is we kind of get to know you and what fuels you specifically um, and then and make adjustments as necessary we've created an entire non-inflammatory protocol it's not one of the free tools on our website it's something that we really like to do a deeper dive with our clients on when they're open to it um, and so, you know, it's once again, like everybody starts where they're at and some are not open to shifting the types of foods they eat because they can even, they can ha still have wonderful success following a macro plan without maybe shifting some of those things as long as, as they hit their numbers and have consistency. Those that have other things at play, you know, we have had a lot of clients that have come in um, with Hashimoto's or... A lot of Hashimoto's. Yeah, we have had a lot. Yeah. yeah. Um, PCOS, mm -hmm. different autoimmune disorders, different things. And we find that oftentimes they'll have progress still by the simple act of the consistency of hitting their numbers and shifting those numbers over time. They'll have a metabolic response, but oftentimes for those clients, if they're open to shifting and eliminating some of those inflammatory foods, we get a much more rapid response because they already have such a low level of chronic inflammation in their body that yeah. it just makes all the difference. Mm -hmm. So if that's something that you've struggled with, you have friends or family that are struggling with it and they want to coach in their corner for a season so that they have the tools to have a much more satisfying, thriving life, then have them reach out to us because we might be a great fit and we might not, but we'll yeah. be really honest with people about that. Yeah. Um, so let us know. Yeah. Um, cool. I just want to add, of course, <laughs> surprise shoes. And she's then, like, shocker. Plus, <laughs> oh, and the UPS man just got here. <laughs> We par, could, par for the course. We could have done this inside, but it was so nice outside, we thought we would take a chance. Yeah. Um, so the other thing I will add, in addition to reducing chronic inflammation with nutrition, we touched on it a few minutes ago, but there's simple things we can all do, right? Like 
practicing gratitude, becoming more stress resilient. We do have a free tool on the toolbox of our website for that. So macromavens.life, click on toolbox. We have several free tools. You guys can say hi to our wonderful <laughs> UPS man. <laughs> Hello. Hello. That's a big box. It is. Have a great day. You too. Um, and then in addition to that, sleep. We've done a whole live on sleep. We've done a whole live on stress resilience. We've done a whole live on hydration. Um, and then just your, your social environment too. Like what you're putting in your environment in terms of your relationships, what you're reading, what you're watching, all of those things play a role in your overall health. So start paying attention. Like do you find yourself higher anxiety because you're watching the news so much like maybe reduce it like amen on that one are you watching shows or reading books that you're finding yourself like your headspace is like heavy because, right before you go to bed yeah mm -hmm. like maybe rethink that like is it worth it is it worth it to use your headspace for something that's like heavy and dark especially if you already have a somewhat stressful lifestyle like evaluate those things because they all play a role in the underlying chronic inflammation in your body which in time can lead to disease so if you can try to manage your stress, get good sleep, stay hydrated, have good relationships, and nourish your body. <laughs> You're winning. You are winning. <laughs> you are winning. Okay, moving on. Yeah, what's next? Why? Tip it Tuesday number two. Yeah. Why and how? Hmm. Okay, why is it important to be adventure ready oh, and yes. how do you do that okay i love this because this is why we weren't here yesterday because yeah. a friend of mine um was like hey i want to climb mount mclaughlin which is a we're local to southern oregon it's just a little a little local volcano <laughs> like a nine nine thousand it's like almost ten thousand feet yeah anyway and it's in our backyard basically and she's like i've never done it i want to do it it's like four thousand feet of elevation gain yeah Maybe more? No, it's it's just right at four. It's like oh. a 10, 11 miles round trip. Anyway, it's, it's a decent, it's like an all day deal. She's like, I've never done it. I wanna do it, do you wanna go? And I was like, yeah. And she's like, okay, how about next week? And I was like, oh, okay. Let me let me invite Emmy and see if she can come. So we all, we worked it out to where yesterday was the day yeah. and it was just like, you know, we got an invitation and we just went. And it was one of those things where you know, had we sat around and thought about it, we could have thought about all the reasons why we shouldn't do it. I mean, it was a Monday, which is a really heavy work day for us. We had to rearrange all sorts of stuff. We started late. Um, it took us a long time. We were hiking back down in the dark. Um, like there was a lot of things, but there was a fall. There was some blood. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it was very exciting. Yeah. <laughs> but the fact is, is like, if you don't if you don't set aside time for that and you don't make it a priority to like get out and push yourself, not only like mentally, but physically, like all of that is so important to our overall well-being. When we got in the car, we all just felt so thankful yeah. that we had, you know, there were the four of us women um, together doing hard things, you know, visiting the whole way up. Like when you push yourself physically in a way that is like outside of the norm and you're doing it with wonderful people, yeah. it creates a bond that is like really special. It does. And I just, I felt so full last night going to bed. I was like, man, and my heart was just super full and there were a million reasons why I shouldn't have gone. I mean, really a million yeah. reasons why we shouldn't have done it. But the fact that we did was reason enough for me to be like, I'm going to say yes to every invitation. And I think the other thing is, um, and actually before I say that, I, I love this. It says, don't minimize it. Uh, it's a huge deal and takes lots of training to prepare for in order to make it fun. I love that because it is, it's, I don't want to minimize it because for a lot of people, it's something that they really have to train for. Yeah. And that's the other point I wanted to make is there's no reason that you can't live in a state where you can just say yes, where you don't have to like have a big season leading up to something to be able to do it. Like Haley and I were so thankful that we have the health to be able to like say sure like let's go tomorrow yeah like not that it was just like easy peasy by any means but Excuse if me. there are <laughs> things that you want to do that you're like oh gosh i would love to do that but or yeah. oh i would love it can be something simple like i'd love to ride bikes more with my grandkids yeah. or i would love to be able to summit this particular mountain or gosh i would love to be able to 
you know, go to the beach and feel, you know, go in the ocean, like whatever it is, small, large, whatever it is, do it. Like get yourself healthy enough where you don't feel like there are things that are holding you back where you can't say yes to the things you want to do. Mm -hmm. There's no reason every single one of us can't do that. Yeah. I know some of us have more limitations than others. Whoa, whoa, I get whoa. that. Life is busy. Life is hard. But if there are things you want to do, there is no reason that you can't. Yeah. Like have a plan. Like that, it starts step with a plan. Yep, absolutely. That's what I was just gonna say. Yeah. Is step number one is you have to put it on your calendar, like whatever that looks like for you. Whether it's yeah. writing it down in a notebook, saying I will hike Mount McLaughlin, or I will go to the beach and swim in the ocean, or whatever that is. Yeah. I will ride bikes with my grandkids. Like write it down. If you don't have a goal, then what are you working for? Yeah. You know, like you put progress behind, if you have a goal and then you put progress re behind it so that you are pushing forward to something, you will meet that goal. However, if you're just like, oh, I'm just doing it to do it, like then there's no push for you to get to point B, right? Yeah. Like set a goal for yourself and then plan for it. Like put a date on the calendar saying, I will do this on this day and then make it happen. Like make a plan it's so 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 important we have, or don't or say i'm gonna do it on monday and then just make it happen yeah <laughs> you know and i i love it because it doesn't have to be a physical goal either no. like we're talking about physical feats right now but i mean it can be a relationship goal it can be a financial goal it can be it can be anything but if you are not tangible and specific and you don't write it down mm -hmm. chances are you are not going to create a plan to do it and so yeah. What you do is you create the goal and then you reverse engineer it and you have a, a plan that will work for you, for your lifestyle. You make sure you have the tools that you need. You have a coach in your corner, yeah. regardless of what it is. You know, it might be a nutrition coach. It might be a financial coach. It might be a coach for whatever industry you're trying to pursue. Coaches for a season can make all, all the, the difference. difference. Coaches need coaches. Like it's, it's why wouldn't we take advantage of other people that really know their craft and that have lived in it for a long mm -hmm. time that can help us excel faster to whatever we're trying to get towards than trying to just recreate the wheel and figure out out, out on our own. Yeah. Especially if you then have the tools in your toolbox to live your life in a way that is so much more gratifying. Yeah. Like I, I, I might be stuttering a little bit. I'm tired. <laughs> Sorry. It's all right. She's been doing it since really early this morning. It's actually been really fun. <laughs> I know what I'm thinking. I just don't know just, if I'm saying it very the well. The distance from here to here is, is far sometimes. Yeah. But I, you know, you guys, I just, I run into people often and it's kind of that like must be nice mentality. Mm -hmm. We all have our things. We all have our struggles, some harder than others for sure. But if you want something, like write it down, mm -hmm. write it down and then be like, okay, what do I need to do this? And what can I potentially shift in order to allow me to do this? Yeah. And who can who? help me do yeah. this? And when can I do this by? Like, be specific. Yeah. And, like, don't limit yourself. Yeah. And build a support team. You know, yeah. like, the gal who invited us, she's a good friend of mine. And I was like, Emmy would be wonderful. And then this other gal who's, who's newly to the area, has never been up here, hasn't done anything like that ever. It was she this, did amazing. And she did amazing. <clears throat> like, you build a group of a team basically of people who will support you, you know, whether you're ready or whether you're not ready, but a team yeah. that'll support you and encourage you along the way makes all the difference. Yeah. It's really important to have people on your side. And then whether it's a physical feed or not, my goodness, you guys, just having camaraderie and fellowship with people, like we were all very different from one another and like, my goodness, it's so fun to do something, especially something physical. Yeah. But just to do something where you can like learn and glean and support one another. And if you don't have much of that in life, there's hire a, a coach. Yeah. Hire I mean, a friend. <laughs> I mean, really, because there's, there's, a, there's something to be said about that. Mm -hmm. Like it's powerful and it's refreshing. And sometimes you don't know how much you need it until you get a little bit of it. Man. You know, <laughs> that's the truth. That's exactly how I thought. I was, it was like medicine. Yeah. Yesterday was like medicine. Yeah. yeah. So, so be whatever ready. your mountain mm -hmm. is, like even if that's metaphorical, like figure out like how are you going to summit that beast? Yeah. Because you can do it. You could do it next week maybe. Yeah. Or you could do it. 
three months, six months, a year from now, depending on what the summit is for you. Yeah. Um, but it's like, don't limit yourself. And be ready to say yes when the opportun opportunity arises and somebody invites you into something that might be a little bit scary, that might be out of your comfort zone, say yes. That is where you grow and change and turn into a better person is when we're pushed a little bit beyond our limit. And then I just want to add, because I loved the comment above about like, don't minimize it because it, is, it isn't an easy task. And for those of you that have maybe struggled with, with if you're local to Southern Oregon, struggled with Mount McLaughlin, like everybody needs to start somewhere. Yeah. It's hard. It's not like, easy. Once you do it, like if you train for yeah. something, then don't just like scrap it. Like keep that level yeah. of health. Like there's no reason to achieve something and then let yourself slip back. Like yeah. get to your goal or surpass your goal. And then, and then set a new and one. And then set a new one or figure out how to maintain that in a way that is like easy and that you've created habits where it's just your new routine and it's just mm -hmm. your new lifestyle. Like yeah. just keep it because then you don't have to worry about like, oh, I'm not ready. Yeah. Be ready. Then the next mountain ready. <laughs> is even easier. Yeah, that was tidbit number two. Tidbit number two. Come at you, tidbit number three. I'm not sure what any of them are. <laughs> What's the next one? Okay, we did, this was just a question that came in earlier. We had somebody just ask us if we are actively taking clients. Oh, like as in you and I are macro mavens. Macro I don't mavens, actually know. I don't know what they're. Oh, well, macro mavens is always taking clients. Always, always, always. We're never not taking clients. If there is a client out there that wants to be coached, we have a coach for you. And um, as far as like Emmy and I actively taking clients, um, I'll let you answer for yourself. Okay. And go ahead and answer first. <laughs> <laughs> um, for a season, I, I wasn't. I just was really focusing on the clients I had and some of the administrative stuff that we're doing outside of like special requests or unique cases. Um, I did just graduate uh, a good handful of clients that I'm so, so, so proud of. So. I would say yes, like if there's a, if somebody specifically was to request me, absolutely. Yeah. And I've got room for two. <laughs> <laughs> I will take on two more clients currently. I like it. Yeah. And then I'm full like because that that's a boundary that I set for myself. I have a loose boundary. <laughs> anyway, it has got room. We have a incredible group yeah. of, of coaches that are, my goodness, you guys, like they work so hard for their clients. They dig they um they just want it like they so any one there's five of us and any one of us is going to absolutely like be in your corner and give you all the tools you need and we also all communicate a ton so yeah like a lot a lot yeah um, sorry betsy is like <laughs> basically like betsy boxing, wants to be part of boxing this. me out oh and <laughs> she's gone um okay another question that we had um was and I'm going to paraphrase this because it was a little bit of a back and forth with somebody wanting to know, like, is this a good time to start with the holidays and kind of everything else this time of year? Oh, yeah. um, and I actually loved that question. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll let you tackle it. Oh, yeah. There's no better time to start, I think. Yeah. You know, if you start now, then you will build habits, hopefully, and you'll go into the holidays, like, super prepared. I feel like sometimes... Like in the years past, I feel like the holidays would come and I'm like, it's a free for all for to do whatever I want. For three months. Yeah. <laughs> and then it's like on the back end of that, I'm like, I hate myself. Why? Like, why did I feel like that needed to happen? Whereas if you go in with a plan and you have some structure built around yeah. what you're going to do, there's so much freedom yeah. and there's no shame, which is actually like the best part of it. On yeah. the back end of like tracking through the holidays, on the back end of it, I never not one time have felt any shame about the decisions that I have made nope. because you make room for the things that are important to you and it allows you to actually decide like what is important to me? Is it important to me to eat whatever I want for Christmas? If it is, great. Yeah. If it's not important to you and you would rather like – you know, allow yourself X, Y, and Z on this day, but then like stay on track and feel really great the next day. That's awesome too. Yeah. You know, like there's so much flexibility and I feel like I was living in such a world of like indulgence and then shame, indulgence and shame. And I was like, it's just, it's Why so, not just feel good every day? Yeah, it's just <laughs> unhealthy. And I'm not saying like, oh, on the days when I wouldn't indulge, like those are not satisfying days. No, I, I allow myself the things that right. I love every day and I, and there is no shame. And that's yeah. what I love about what we do. You can have the things that you love. Sometimes it feels like an indulge. I had a client message me just a few minutes ago. She's like, I literally cannot eat 
this much food anymore. Like, yeah. I, I literally can't do it. Like, I, it's too and much. she's probably still losing weight while getting, well, increasing calories. Yeah, and, and she. on her goal. Yeah, and, and she's like, I can't, I can't do it. Like, it's too much. And I'm like, okay, that's a, that's a great place to be. Yeah. You know, if, if you get to eat the foods that you love and you enjoy and you're like, I, I, I'm kind of done, you know, then, then we'll evaluate that and, and, you know, go from there. But anyway, starting now, I think is the best. I absolutely, I think that, yes, starting on the new year is a great idea because the new year's resolutions, whatever, but new year's resolutions don't hold typically. Um, but if you build up the habits and the strategies ahead of the holidays and you go into them like with a plan, Thanksgiving is one day. Christmas yeah, is one, one day. day. I know it's a whole season, but like Haley said, like there's a lot of traditions that we do as a family that I fit in because it's important to me and mm -hmm. I enjoy it. And you can be flexible. The goal is a more flexible metabolism, but I want to wake up on Christmas feeling good. I want to go into the New Year's feeling good. And if I can do that, knowing how I can fuel my body and still have some of the things I enjoy without having this big... Um, like spike or feeling awful, like yeah. why, why wouldn't I? Honestly. So I think any time that you're ready is the right time. Yeah. And I wouldn't worry about things like Thanksgiving and Christmas because it's two days out of the year and we can be flexible. Yeah, totally. So, if you look at the big picture, like I probably shouldn't even say this, but if you look at the big picture, like being off for two days is not, it is not a make it or break it situation. Yeah. But I think that what the most important thing I think for me is having clients who feel really strong mentally and they stop feeling the shame cycle of, of eating something and feeling guilty about eating it. Like yeah. there's no reason for that. And if you feel that way, if you eat something that you think isn't good and then you feel very guilty afterward, like give us a call. Like you shouldn't, you shouldn't feel that way. Yeah. And there's no reason for that. Not at all. Okay, we had another question, and we actually answered this pretty extensively in a recent live that we did on sugar, seed oils, and alcohol. So go back and take a listen if you haven't, if you're interested. Uh, we did a little bit of a deep dive, but we did have somebody write in and ask us if they can still drink alcohol when working with us as a client. Oh, yeah. There's nothing off limits. Like, if it fits within the boundaries of your macros, then yes. Um, do we tell our clients, well, you should drink alcohol every night. No, we don't do that. No. <laughs> um, but if that's something that is part of your lifestyle that you enjoy, then yes, we, we are not here. Like I said, we are not here to shame anybody. We do not judge you. If you can fit it within the boundaries of your macros and you are progressing in the right direction for your goals, um, then yeah, if at some point we see that you, um, you know, if we need to reevaluate your goals or you're not meeting your goals and we need to go in and look at things, we might make some adjustments and, but that's all a conversation that would happen with the client yeah. and it would never, I would never tell a client, you need to stop drinking alcohol. No, we would want that to be like a decision on the client. Now, would minimizing, um, the minimizing how much alcohol is drank help in progress? Probably. Probably. And it's not about the calories. It's about the fact of the inflammation created by the alcohol. Mm -hmm. So even if it fits in. So uh, same as what Haley said, like we're never gonna tell somebody like don't have this, just hey, if you have this, just know. Mm -hmm. And also if like let's say that, you know, a lot of their calories are being taken up by, we track alcohol as fat, which is a whole nother discussion, by that then they're not getting other healthy fats to support hormones. We're just gonna educate yeah. and then let our clients make their own decisions. Yep. So. We're not super That's bossy. All. We're only sort of bossy. We're sort of bossy. <laughs> <laughs> I so I like the phrase like tell a client what they need but then give them what they want. And, you know, that's really, like, you're ultimately, it's ultimately your decision. Yeah. It's ultimately your body. But we would not be doing our jobs if we did not tell you what we feel is best case scenario for you. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Um, okay. I, Are there um, more tidbits in there? I had a couple. <laughs> I had a couple more tidbits. Yeah, a couple more tidbits. A couple more tidbits. I did have a question about. Um, I don't have any questions or anything. <laughs> I'm just like, what do you got? <laughs> I just. I didn't write them all down. I went back through some of the questions we hadn't answered in the last week, and then we had a couple on our. Um, well, probably more than a couple on our question box this morning. Somebody asking about um, MM Fit. What's? I think the question was, uh, tell me about MM Fit. What's the deal? <laughs> <laughs> Which I like. Okay, I like that. Yeah, MM Fit. <laughs> MMFit is, well, I feel like I'm answering all of the questions. You can take MMFit. 
M and Fit is a fantastic program. <laughs> That's it's what a, I was going to say. It's an <laughs> add-on program right now, so it's only accessible to our existing clients. But it's basically a way of coupling a strategic plan for your movement and your fitness with your nutrition. So we are first and foremost a like nutrition coaching company, and we love that because we think that that is so important foundationally before you ever start getting a strategy about moving your body. But we'd love for you to move your body. So <laughs> if you are just throwing stuff at a wall in terms of your movement, you are probably not getting the best outcome for your time. Unless it's a heavy time. medicine ball. Yeah. And then, you know, you'll get a little bit from that. But if you're <laughs> moving, if you're taking time to move your body, fantastic. But if you're not getting the outcomes you want from the movement portion and you're already doing the nutrition portion and you want a strategy specific to your goals, that's where MM Fit comes in because it is a plan specific to your goals that gives you instruction and movements to do based off of two days a week, three days a week, or five days a week, based off of if you're looking for endurance and fat loss, or if you're looking for maintenance, or if you're looking for muscle gain and strength, it's really individualized. And so it's fantastic. It was created yeah. by our MM Fit director, Sarah Lugman, who is just oh, this man. incredible breathing, movement, exercise specialist that's taught throughout the world. Mm -hmm. And um, we're really thankful to have it. And so if you just feel like you're randomly looking up workouts on YouTube or you're just going to the gym and kind of making your way through and not really doing it with a strategy um, or just not really knowing where to start it might be a great option for you if you're a client if you're a client <laughs> if you're not a client and you're you're like wow I want to do that well you can sign up at macromavens.life click the hop on board button a coach will reach out to you you can become a client and then you can join MM Fit. yeah girl yeah also, blood, blood, blood. If you, I, I know, I feel like we're usually like very educationally oriented and a lot of our questions today, I guess, feel a little bit more like, whatever. Plug, plug, plug. <laughs> She's taking clients. I've got room for two. <laughs> I don't have much room for many more clients. I will say well, that. She said she's got room. I'm just being very specific. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what else do you want to talk about? Um, hmm. I don't know. Hey, guys. <laughs> Have you done something today that brings you joy? Oh, yeah. If you haven't, or even if you have. Yeah. I like, like, I like this. Yeah. I, I like where we're going with I, this. Like, think about something that fills your cup and do more of that, even if it feels like a stretch, even if you don't think you have the time, even if you have to work your whole day and rearrange things to make it happen. Like, what brings you joy? Is it that first sip of coffee in the morning? Ooh, <laughs> is it does. having, like getting that. up a little bit earlier and writing down your gratitude and praying or meditating and maybe writing in your journal? Is it getting first of the morning sunshine mm -hmm. and moving your body really hard? Is it hugging somebody and telling them you love them? I love, love you, you. buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Is it taking a drink of ice cold bubbly <laughs> I know that and brings letting you a lot it of joy. set? Yeah. Um, you know, simple, profound, whatever it may be, like what, like, I think sometimes we go through life and our days are so full and so busy. We don't actually pause and be like, I want to get my joy meter higher. Like, I know that sounds corny, but you guys like, we only have uh, one life. Yeah. And man, I, I want to live mine without regrets. And I get in the grind too. Like life is full. <laughs> like there's a lot going on, but mm. I think if we can all identify things and actually tangibly know, like, this brings me joy and I want more of it, and then do that thing. Do it. Make it happen. Yeah. Plan for it daily, and then do it. Anybody want to share, like, what brings you joy? What brings you joy? Well, a lot of things bring me joy. Adventure brings me joy. Hanging out with people I love. Yesterday, you know, sometimes it only takes one day of doing something that brings you a whole lot of joy to yeah. last you all week. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that was yesterday for me. I love that. I it think was... that the one, like setting one day aside where we were like super focused on doing something hard and doing it with people that I really care about, like that just brought my joy meter all the way to the top and it'll, I think I'll, it'll hang out there for the next several days. And it's going to make it so that the rest of the week is, um extra wild like yeah like I, yeah it doesn't make it, it easier <laughs> but it's but it's worth it yeah um hiking to waterfalls I oh love i love that that and brings you take me joy amazing too amazing pictures of waterfalls <laughs> of everything um i 
I love waterfalls and we've got some I mean once again we're in Southern here. Oregon I know there's actually a lot of waterfalls in a lot of places um, but we've got some really good ones here uh, riding your horse oh I love that I want to do some trail riding I I've only done that one time mm. and it really hurt my butt <laughs> I remember it being it like very exciting and very fun for like the first half an hour, and then I was like, "Dang, this is the, you gotta like, gotta like, train for that." I know something that brings you joy: hmm. your bite, your your bit of chocolate every day. Yes, my bit of chocolate brings me a lot of joy. I also have um, a 1972 Volkswagen Beetle, silly little yellow hunk of metal, and that thing brings me so much joy. I just it's, looking at yeah. that little car, it just makes me so happy. I love walking in my fields barefoot mm. and like, I don't know, just any time of day, sunsets, sun rises, snuggles with my boys or my hubby, yeah. adventuring, connection with friends, Good food. dancing, dancing. I love to dance. I like to dance too. Um, let's see. I'm moving to Utah in two weeks. So a few less waterfalls. Oh, yeah. yeah, but oh my god. Oh, but the Utah. ones that are there are amazing. There. I love Utah. I do too. Utah's one of my favorite states. Um, but some amazing mountain lakes. Mm. Yeah. What are, okay, top two places that you love in Utah? Top two places, I love southern Utah. All things southern yeah. Utah. Moab, the Moab area and Arches. Oh my gosh, it's spectacular there. And then I really like, um, like the Park City area, like up in the mountains outside of Salt Lake. Really, really great area too. Mm -hmm. I just, I love Slot Canyons. So like mm -hmm. I love to hike Slot Canyon. Zion, we were really lucky to be there mm -hmm. in a very um, low density time, like very few people, which it doesn't sound like happens very often. Mm -hmm. So um, it was amazing. Okay, walks around the farm with my son. I love mm -hmm. that. I I love doing that too. Like you guys. So these far, are... so far, like mm -hmm. it. I there is a theme here, and a lot of it is like outside. So yeah. now that I mean October in Southern Oregon is one of my favorite seasons because it's like it's 80s. It's so beautiful here in October and um, we're coming into the winter don't let the weather keep you indoors no nope. there is no such thing as bad weather there is only bad gear so get a rain jacket and wear it if it's rainy where you are and go outside I used to because I love to walk and I used to not walk as much in the winter and then a couple years ago I started walking rain or shine yeah and I actually I love really rainy love rainy walks mm -hmm. I just there's something about it so I, and what I love about everything you guys have commented on so far is none of them cost anything. They're not about material things. Like Except for okay my car. Have, well, yeah. My little bug. Yeah. Which it wasn't very much have, money, though. <laughs> like material things that bring you joy, too. Yeah. But, like, these are all about connection, you guys. Mm -hmm. Like, connection and enjoying, like, this beautiful earth that was created for us. Yeah. Like, it's, I love it. So, Today was simple. We didn't come on with a lot of things planned. We just thought we'd answer some questions, hop on and do Tuesday tidbits. Yep. Um, and talk about disease prevention and um, joy meters and um, saying yes and being adventure ready. Mm -hmm. And just there's no reason not to be. No. Nope. So make sure if you haven't already, like identify at least that one thing that you know brings you joy. And how can you produce more of that? Amen. Today. And if you missed our plug about who we are and what we do, you can go to <laughs> macromavens.life, click the hop on board button, and a coach will reach out to you. We hope you have a great week, and we will probably be back here next Monday. Yeah, if not before. If not, you never know. You never know. <laughs> Thank you guys Bye so guys. much. Reach out anytime with questions. Yep. Bye.